Hi everybody, I wanted to do a quick little video about food sensitivities and sort of just to tell you kind of how I ended up down this path. I have two kids. I have a 15 year old and a 12 year old and both my kids have tremendous amounts of food allergies. My older son tends to have more environment or what we thought were more environmental allergies. So, you know, trees, pollen, grass and all that stuff. Um, were obvious, but then they triggered into food. So things like apples, because they grew on trees, would give him an itchy mouth, nuts, tree nuts. And he definitely had another list of, uh, of foods, but he never seemed to have any kind of reaction to them. So, so far, we kind of felt good about where he was at with the food allergies, because he just wouldn't eat a nut or, you know, something like that. My other son, my younger son, is allergic to a whole host of stuff, and that's a whole bigger journey and a hassle. So, you name it, healthy, not healthy, he's allergic to it. So the difference, though, that I learned by accident is that there are two different kinds of allergies. There are slow allergies and there are fast allergies. My younger son has what they call fast allergies. When he does a blood test or he does a rash test, he presents with the allergen. So he gets an inflammation, He gets, if, or if he ingests the food, he will get hives, he will vomit, he will have stomach pains, he would go anaphylactic. Um, so it's very, you know, scary in one sense, but it's also comforting on the other sense because I know immediately if something he has eaten is causing a problem. For my older son, though, uh, this was not so clear. So he's 15 now, so maybe about two years ago, he started to experience... Um, he would vomit, for lack of a better word, and, and not to be sound like we were dismissive about it, but we are a family, unfortunately, that has had kids vomit because of allergies. So it's not something that raises an alarm for us. But he would, he was starting, and he wasn't the one who was always vomiting. So he would get up from the table if we were eating, and he would say he feels like something went down the wrong pipe, and he would like vomit up water. It wasn't like he was vomiting up food, like it was an allergic reaction. It just, it always seemed like he was swallowing things wrong. And the moments that these would happen were very far like apart. They weren't, you know, daily or weekly. So over the course of that happening for about a year, maybe once every couple of months, the time frame started to get closer. But more important, the duration that he felt like the food was lodged in his throat would last longer. So like maybe it was two summers ago now, I'm kind of forgetting off the top of my head. Uh, I remember being at a baseball game. My son was home on his own telling me that he felt like something was caught in his throat. So, you know, went home to try to help him, but we couldn't help him break it down. Made an appointment with the GI doctor. And then my both my son and my husband kept saying, well, he's probably just not chewing his food enough, blah, blah, blah. They came up with all these reasons why there was nothing wrong. So we canceled the appointment. Cut to... Um, Actually, right around Hurricane Sandy, I think it was, so maybe two years ago. Um, and he went through a 24-hour period where he could not swallow anything. And not only could he not swallow anything, he was vomiting up water all the time. So called the pediatrician. She thought it was a bug. I kept saying, you know, he's a big kid. He understands that it's not a bug. It felt like he had a shelf in his um, throat. So that was like a trampoline that like the food would bounce out of. So long story short, went to the hospital. He was in the hospital for about 15 hours. They couldn't figure out what was wrong. Still not holding down any foods. Finally, they took him in for an emergency endoscopy, and they discovered that he had a condition called eosinophilic esophagitis, or EOE. And what eosinophilic esophagitis is, is a growing condition that is an, a, re, a food reaction, an allergy reaction, where your esophagus has been bombarded by foods that it is allergic to and it starts to inflame itself and swell. And the eosinophils, the good guys, the white blood cells come flying into the esophagus to help it, but they get trapped in the esophagus and now they create even more inflammation in the esophagus so there's no passageway. It's really incredibly frightening. So the moral of the story is that my son was allergic to dairy and probably a whole lot of other stuff. Though if I looked at his diet, probably about 98% of it was dairy. He was a growing boy. It was milk, milk, milk. Contrary to what I believed about dairy, knowing my own issues and that my younger son was clearly allergic to dairy and, and has not had dairy since he was little, um, it, it didn't seem far-fetched to me that he was allergic to dairy. So long story short, he, you know, we cut him off, we cut him off the dairy. He's, he had to take medicine and he's being treated for this right now. But the moral here was that there are two kinds of allergies. So slow allergies don't present with blood work. He's never tested positive for dairy. They don't present with rash testing. He's never rash tested for dairy. Yet his body can't break it down. So while he's not vomiting, his internal body is still creating inflammation. This led me towards a path of kinesiology and learning about food sensitivity testing, where basically you're holding the food, but now I do it in vials for people, and I can muscle test people to determine if they have food sensitivities. 
Like a blood test, it's not a definitive test to define anything, but it's a hell of a lot cheaper and you can run through a way broader panel. There are still so many foods that I can't blood test my kids for or rash test my kids for because they're so specific. Um, but I can take a flaxseed and rub it on my son's skin or I can muscle test him to see if he has a condition with it. It has changed a lot of my friends and their kids' lives by being able to identify foods that they are sensitive to. Um, and it just, if for nothing else, just to eliminate and pay attention to that. So if that's something you're interested in as we go through this journey, let me know. Because if you live local to me, I do that. Um, but going through the own journey with my kids was really quite telling about it. Because a lot of us are walking around eating foods and not connecting the dots between the way those foods make us feel and what they're doing internally. So you might be eating a bagel and feel great. But it could be, you might not have full-blown celiac but you might be having a gluten intolerance or you might be having a dairy intolerance or a flaxseed intolerance or a tomato intolerance, a nightshade intolerance, an avocado, eggs, sulfur, anything that is causing inflammation in your body that prevents you from losing weight and prevents you from getting healthy. So I'm happy to answer more questions about this, but I just wanted to put that information out because I just feel like the whole point of this online program is to educate, and this was a life lesson for me. Um, and getting a hold of this with my son by the time I did, it's probably changed his health for the rest of his life. Um, so anyway, I hope this was helpful. Kind of scary, I know. Um, but again, if there's anything I can do to help, if you're interested in the muscle testing, let me know. Okay? Take care.